Welcome at this HPE Cloud Physics and SAF uh, webinar that we're organizing since uh, HPE made some decisions in the last months about uh, tools that are provided uh, by HPE to make you, your life uh, easier uh, to sell, to present uh, solutions uh, to your customers and definitely something on that assessment side. So what does that mean on the assessment side? is that, of course, uh, you need to gather information about the current environment, and then we're going to take a look together uh, what are we going to offer to that customer. And so at that moment, uh, there was a, a tool called Lanamark uh, that was uh, very heavily used here um, by us and by you. Um, what did we do? We installed a little collector. We gathered the information, we got a Word and an Excel file, and based on that information, we created a bill of material, we did a sizing. Now, what happened is that uh, HPE uh, retired the use of Lanamark. Now, Lanamark as such is not retired, it's an external company, and HPE was paying licenses uh, for you. As so HP said, hold on, we're going to uh, stop paying those licenses uh, because we have something else. Uh, in our own portfolio um, that we're going to offer to our partners. Okay, yeah, so that's what we're going to take a look at. So we did a similar webinar already a few months ago before the uh, retirement of Lanamark. So now we see that we keep on getting questions about, yeah, what is that? How do I use it? Is it complex? Is it difficult? Well, no, because we have a lot of customers already who are currently today using uh, cloud physics and also SAF uh, a little bit. I'll tell you in this webinar all the details. And so how cloud physics, because this is the way to go, how it can make your life easier. Today already for sizing a hyper-converged environment with SimpliVity and Nimble DHEI, but the, on the long term, cloud physics will be the tool for everything. Okay. By the way, um, if we take a look at uh, uh, the Gartner um, Awards, uh, HPE won a few of them, but one of them on technical assessment um, and uh, data information, well, uh, Cloud Physics was there, uh, the winner of that um, of that section. Okay, so it is a really uh, great tool. So I'm going to show it to you as well um, in this session. Now, before we go there really quickly, uh, for those who are still using uh, Lanamark, well, um, really quickly, what was announced? Well, from October 1st on, uh, it is not available anymore. At least the portal is there, but we cannot log in anymore. Uh, so we advised you and, and all the people that I was in contact with, I said, hey, it's September, please download all those reports because from October 1st on, um, uh, it is not accessible anymore, yeah? So probably most of you, uh, meanwhile, noticed that it is not accessible anymore and so that you needed to do something, okay? Now, um, not available, we don't have the reports anymore, so we need to take a look, what are we gonna do now? Well, uh, technically, HPE has two tools. And so I made a comparison here uh, for you so that you can see the differences between the tool that exists already a long time, SAF, S-A-F, Storage Assessment Foundry, like the name uh, implies. It's a tool used initially by the storage department, okay? It is still an assessment tool to gather information from Current storage environments, by the way, not only from HPE, but also from Dell and IBM and all those others that are there on the market. And so it will take a look at that storage environment and then um, it will give you a report to say you need that number of capacity and IOPS and latency and so on. Over time, SAF uh, became a more complete solution. So today it's not only taking a look at storage, but also to your compute, to your server environment. So it supports uh, physical deployment. So physical servers, Hyper-V and VMware environments. Okay, quite complete. Um, although there are some ah, limitations also on the usage, um, 
it's not complex but uh, it's rather basic if you take a look at the dashboards as well you will see it's all about data collection and then uh, give you the numbers to do that sizing when we compare to cloud physics you will see that it's it's, it's a much uh, sexier interface it gives you much more in-depth information um, so that you can become some kind of a trusted advisor uh, to your partners. Uh, you really can say not only these are the numbers, but by the way, did you know that uh, you are out of support? Uh, this is this firmware with this driver with that operating system is not supported. Uh, you have here uh, 25, 50, 100 virtual machines, but did you know that plenty of them are badly configured, not following the best practices. So in cloud physics, uh, this is, by the way, cloud physics, little background. It's an external company that was acquired by HPE. So HPE bought them just before the summer time frame. HPE bought that company. And so they integrated now within the entire HPE uh, company, initially in the storage and the server environment, but you will see, that's my opinion over time, you know, InfoSight probably, well, I think that InfoSight will be the long-term cloud physics. So with cloud physics, we're gonna run during one month, we're gonna run that assessment with all those best practices to get new opportunities, to sell new uh, solutions to your customers. And then at the end, in once that it's operational, we have InfoSight that will give you that same experience but then on the long run, also with all those recommendations. Now, you're going to say, hey, why do we have SAF then? Well, today, cloud physics is VMware only, okay? While with Lanamark, uh, you could do VMware and also physical servers. Eh? We had those two collectors. Um, we had Snap and Explore. Um, and those two collectors um, were there for your VMware and your non-VMware um, physical uh, servers. And then the Hyper-V servers uh, were under that uh, physical uh, guest, okay? So um, now cloud physics, what I can say today, it's VMware only. Now, if we take a look at the roadmap, uh, so one of the highest priorities is indeed Hyper-V and physical servers, and it's on the roadmap, it, it's coming next year by the way it's december so nothing will happen anymore this year but then anyway, we're next year but i cannot say if it's january or december or probably something in between but today cloud physics is vmware only now how does it collect data in a more granular way huh? only 20 seconds instead of every five minutes and every 15 minutes for Lanamark and SAF. So it goes really quickly. You see instantly if it's going up or going down, if it goes bad or not. Uh, we get all the information from vCenter, just like with Lanamark. Um, it's a VM, by the way. If we take a look at, at the technical comparison um, with Lanamark, there was a little executable that you needed to install um, on a Microsoft physical or virtual machine. Um, also with SAF, it's an executable. You don't even have to install anything. You just have to execute that executable. And then you have to configure to your storage and your networking and your compute and your vCenter, and you will collect all the information. Now with cloud physics, it's a little bit different. Uh, you don't even need a server. You it's a virtual appliance. So it's a little VM that you're going to deploy. I'm going to show you how easy it is to deploy that little virtual machine um, as an appliance on your VMware. And then you need to connect to your vCenter. So you just have to type in the username and the password of your vCenter. And then it will start collecting the information. After around 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, you get the first numbers already in your dashboard huh, on the website. So it's a website, it's a web-based portal um, where you can uh, get the first analysis. Now we advise, just like with Lanamark, but this is a da, it, it's a hard uh, thing scheduled in there. We're going to run uh, one week for the right sizing. So you will see after one week, you will get an email as well where it says, okay, um, we collected enough information. So now you get the full report and uh, you get all those um, analysis and also advisories, recommendations um, in there. Okay.
So really great, uh, works great. I'm gonna show it all to you. Now, the difference is, and what is also one of those challenges, if we take a look with Lanamark, the, the, the data was in a database at Lanamark. Okay, while now the data that is collected is in the, in the database at HPE for SAF and Cloud Physics. And by the way, the owner of the data is your customer. And so it's finally your customer. Uh, the, the, the installation and the, the, the invitation flow is a little bit different with Cloud Physics. Um, it's the customer that will initiate uh, the collection of the data. He's owner of the data as well and so he can also he can the customer can see everything the end i'm talking about the end customer then didn't have access to lanamark unless you invited him with his email address um here uh the, the end customer will have access to that portal as well you will see how it works in the demo okay now, uh, this, I have more information about this. Uh, this was initially to get uh, started with uh, Cloud Physics. Initially, it was a little, it was a controlled access. So initially, not everyone had access, but from October 1st on, everybody has access. And later on in the training uh, material in the presentation, and you will get a copy of it, you will uh, see how easy it is to register to get access to Cloud Physics and then uh, make your first assessment. Now, the main uh, chunk of this presentation is, of course, Cloud Physics. But really quickly, I want to show you something about SAF Storage Assessment Foundry as well. Because like I said, if you have customers with physical servers or you have customers with Hyper-V, until a certain moment next year, we will need to use SAF as an assessment tool. Uh, so um, it's offline collection. You can upload as well uh, from uh, VMware, um, but also Hyper-V and physical servers. How do you get there? Well, it's very simple. It's a link, saf.hpe.com. And I assume that probably you use that link already because for those who are doing storage sizing and who are using Ninja Stars, well, that tool, Ninja Stars, to do storage sizing of your Nimble and Primera and Aletra and Store Ones, that's one. Well, that Ninja Stars tool, you can find it as well on that SAF Storage Assessment Foundry website. I will show it later on in this session during the demo. Okay, and so it's a tool for HPE employees and for HPE partners being you. Okay. Now, what are the key features for SAF? Well, there's nothing to install at the customer compared to a uh, Lanamark, uh, for instance. So it's a grab and go data collection. So it's just you collect the data, it will be uploaded in the database, and then you get reports um, out of it. And that's it. Okay. You just get the data, and that's it. So there's no continuous learning and analysis of your environment yeah so for those customers who are quite um sensitive about yeah which data is it and how does it look like and how long do you going to keep it running and so on well this is very really simple we just collect the data and then that's it so what are we going to do uh you go to saf.hp.com you're going to download that executable that's saf collector yeah that executable um you're going to uh run it um, if you if it's the first time, I advise you to go to the training page. Uh, so there at the top right, there is a link. Uh, and there's also here the direct link in the presentation uh, to that training page. So there are a few a little short videos of a few minutes that show you how easy it is to get started to collect the data from an EMC array or another storage array. And then from your Hyper-V or your Windows or your Linux environment. Um, so it's really easy. Uh, you just have to put in the IP addresses of those servers, the username and the password, and he collects all that data. And then finally, once that you run uh, that, uh, as, uh, that assessment, you collected that data, it gets um, uploaded in the portal. Um, and it's, it's a web-based page as well. And so at that moment, you will get all these numbers, numbers from numbers of CPU and memory and storage and latency and IOPS. And yes, you can see some graphs because there are evolutions as well in SAF. So SAF keeps on existing. Um, 
Uh, and so there is a uh, roadmap of uh, uh, enhancements of more information that is displayed as well um, in there. Uh, so uh, this is the one that I got from October, for instance. So that's quite recent uh, where uh, the SAF team, they added more dashboards. Um, also, uh, you can select more granularly on host level, on VM level. Uh, there are more uh, tables and columns that are added as well uh, for all the feedback, because I was also in that team uh, where the SAF team was collecting feedback. I am using this tool as well for some opportunities. And so uh, they were asking us, uh, uh, which information do you need on top? And at that moment, it was a comparison with Lanomark as well. Uh, all the fields from Lanomark that you will find as well now in SAF. And on the long run, you will see that SAF and Cloud Physics will grow together or merge together, or whatever, how they're going to do it. I have no idea. But um, you will see that at the end, what's the outcome for you? It's got to be the same all the information that you need to do a correct sizing or yourself or together with us, of course, uh, because I have a lot of uh, partners who just say, hey, Bart, we run the assessment. Here is the report. Please give me uh, a bill of material. Please, can you do the sizing of an environment? Okay, now we can do that with SAF, but of course, we're going to do it more and more as long as today the customer has a VMware environment, we're going to do it with cloud physics. So what's cloud physics? It's also a cloud-based application. So it's completely running in the cloud. Uh, what are we going to do? Data collection, just like SAF and Lanomark was doing. But now what we're going to do is we're going to use that data. We're going to visualize that data. And we're going to do analytics on there. And that's the whole idea that you as an HPE partner knows more about the current environment and that you can make a better decision to um, make a sizing for the most ideal HPE solution so that we get at the end, we take data, you, the HPE partner and HPE that we get a more productive uh, partnership. And I can tell you already, now I have a few SimpliVity uh, projects uh, that were uh, done, handled really quickly based on the numbers of cloud physics. By the way, I'm going to show it to you how it looks like. And the idea is, of course, now it's ideal for SimpliVity because of the retirement of Lanomark. But you will see that also for all your other nimble, proliant, Apollo, Aletra opportunities, cloud physics at the end will be the way to go. Why is that? Because there are plenty of metrics that are captured, much more than SAF, much more than Lanomark at that moment in time. All those metrics are captured across compute, storage, networking, data stores, virtual machines, hosts, everything. At that moment, you will get that cloud-based uh, dashboard, but under there, you will get so-called cards. Uh, I will show them all or most of them I'm going to show to you, but there are plenty of cards, sub-dashboards, that you will get to get more information. For instance, I'm going to get started with the vCenter summary, but then we can do a drill down on the host level, on the guest level, so on virtual machine level. He's even going to take a look at your licensing. So your VMware licensing, there's always a question, yeah, how many licenses do I have? Which type of license do I have? Is it still under support, yes or no? Well, you get uh, an inventory of that one as well. You will get a list of the sizing, the right sizing of virtual machines that uh, VM is uh, over provisioned or under provisioned. This is good. This is bad. The VMware tools that are running, yes or no. Uh, data store space analysis, uh, VM space analysis, and very important as well today. Ever almost everybody is using DIT provisioning. So that space saver of disk reclamation that needs to be running, but it's not always happening. So you can get a report really easily to show how much capacity that you can save by putting it on an efficient storage platform, like for instance, a Nimble or an Aletra or a SimpliVity environment. That's on hypervisor today, VMware level. 
and next year one day there will be Hyper-V as well. Um, then on the infrastructure level, uh, shared storage analysis, this is a little bit like SAF then is doing, he's doing a complete analysis, a drill down, drill down of the storage device that I don't know that EVA or TRIPAR or whatever uh, store virtual array that you have with all the latencies and the IOPS and the reads and the writes percentages and so on is going to take a look at HA. Also, he's looking specifically to PCI IO device analysis so that you can see, for instance, my 10 gigabit or my one gigabit or my eight gigabit fiber channel network, how much traffic is effectively on there. Do I need to upgrade to 10 gigabit or to 25 gigabit, or do I need a 16 gigabit fiber channel? Well, uh, we, um, Cloud Physics is also going to take a look at there. Um, we're going to take a look at the aggregated performance, uh, even power consumption, IO contention. So it's going to tell you as well on your VM level if there are IO contentions, yes or no, together with the data store contentions and then host resource commitment if you're doing over or under provisioning on your host resources. And then finally, of course, this is why we are here initially uh, for that HAI uh, sizing analysis. So today you will get sizing analysis numbers for HAI, but on the long run, and it's not even the long run, it will be really soon that it will be added. Since it's a cloud-based platform, they can really easily add those decks, those views in there to do a sizing for Alettra. Alettra is the first one coming together with Nimble and Primera and so on. And at, uh, later than that, they will add ProLiant and Apollo compute sizing as well. For those who are interested, now watch out with that. Uh, if you're interested in that, please call me because it needs to be tweaked. There are a lot of variables that you need to fill in, but it's always good for those customers that say, hey, I have a customer that wants to go to the cloud and he has 25 VMs and he has 20 terabyte. And then I know Azure and AWS and Google, they have those cloud sizers. And then you can say 25 VMs, 20 terabyte, push a button. Well, this is what it costs. Well, that is what it costs on the infrastructure side, but not on the utilization side, because for that, I hope that you know that with the cloud, uh, there are uh, charges as well on IO, uh, how many IOs putting data in the cloud is free, but getting data out of the cloud, uh, it costs money based on the number of IOs of your storage and your networking. And of course, in advance, you never know. Um, so know that there are cloud simulators uh, for that customer who did an assessment based on capacity and CPU and memory and storage and so on, but also on the IOs, know that you can simulate then how much would it cost for that assessment to run it on AWS or on Google or on Azure with the real numbers. And yes, you can even choose if you want to run it um, in a data center in the US or in Europe with the GDPR, of course, you can even select that uh, data center somewhere in Frankfurt or in Ireland. And then you will see that it's rather expensive. Yeah. Uh, and even when tweaking, when putting discounts and so in there, you will see that it's always at the end, it's always more expensive compared to Green Lake. Now, Green Lake is another story, but there is a Green Lake simulator in there to show how much that it costs on Green Lake. More about that to come in the upcoming months. Um, and of course, an on premises IT uh, simulator as well. So, a lot of information in there to help you to make the right decision. Now, the main uh, things, of course, is it's got to be easy. Well, we're going to install an observer. Uh, that collector to collect data, we call it an observer. It's a little virtual machine. It's an appliance. You can download the OVA file or you just take that URL and you say deploy uh, OVF from URL. And within five minutes, that virtual machine is deployed. You need to power it on 
And the only information that you need to put in in there, so it's a text-based screen, it's a lightweight Linux um, complete locked down appliance. Um, you cannot log in or so in there. Um, and the only thing that you need to put in there is the IP address of your vCenter, the username and the password of your vCenter. And then the fourth parameter you will see that later on is a token. Uh, that token is the unique number from your assessment from your account. Because, of course, that collector needs to send the information to that uh, cloud-based platform and to identify this is your customer with that data for your assessment in your portal. Well, at that moment, we need that token. So when you create the assessment, I'm gonna show it to you, you will get a token. And it's that token that you need to type in in that virtual machine. That's the most difficult thing that you're gonna do that day. It takes less than 10 minutes. And from that moment on, he starts collecting information. In less than 15 minutes, you get some insights already on the inventory. And after seven days, you get those recommendations, you get those uh, actionable intelligence, you get all the reports, all the dashboards with all the recommendations in there. When we're going to talk about security, don't worry, all the data that is sent is encrypted. You don't need to install agents anywhere. There is no performance impact on your infrastructure. Okay, and by the way, all the data that you can see, also your end customer can see, the only thing that we see is names of virtual machines, because of course, if we're going to give recommendations, uh, we need to know the name of that virtual machine, of course, but to give you an idea, we don't need Active Directory integration, so we cannot get in, in those Windows virtual machines, we cannot see any user data, we can only see infrastructure data. Uh, so it's also completely GDPR compliant and so on. So about those insights really quickly. Uh, well, everything that you can imagine, cluster, storage, networking, VMs, host, we're going to collect the resource utilization in there. And then based on those objects, you will see that we have a few maps where we're going to, uh, dependency maps, where we're going to link them all uh, together, but you will see that are a lot of parameters that will be collected uh, without any agents. These are just APIs, performance APIs against that uh, fee center uh, that we're going to do, and that's it. It's a continuous process uh, for one month. So after one month, it stops anyway. You will get an email: "Hey, your collection with Klaus Physics has ended." Here you can find the reports. You can start it again, but the idea is that you're going to run it uh, for uh, one month by default. So for you, what are the benefits for you? It's provided at no charge. If you are an HPE partner, uh, we assume that you're an HPE partner. I will show you in a minute how you can register uh, um, with the tool. I'll give you the link uh, on the Cloud Physics uh, website. Then you're going to get those insights from your customer environment. And then it will be a data-driven conversation that you're going to do with your customer. So we're not going to talk about yeah, CPU and memory and storage. No, these are the facts. This is what you have. Yeah, this is what you need at this moment. And then you can build in 10 or 20% growth per year or over five years. But it will be easy to model your VMware environment in combination with, at the end, any HP solution. Yeah. Simplicity, but also DHEI, a traditional environment with an MSA, with two, three, four ProLiant servers. We can go up to Synergy or Apollo, but the thing is that it's really fast that we can deliver you that solution. And we're going to help you with that, of course. Now, the assessment process, what are we going to do? You need to do an invite. You as an HP partner, so I'm going to show it to you, uh, you're going to send an invite to your end customer. Yeah, so it's complete open process. It's the end customer that will get a direct invitation through your partner portal. So the customer receives the instructions to deploy the observer. Okay, now you're going to say, yeah, but my customer has no technical background at all. Well, no problem. He gets the invitation. But he will contact you together with you. You're going to do the installation. So if the customer has no IT experience, no IT department, of course, you're going to do it. 
but the end customer can do it. He has full control because at the end, it's his data. Now, the insights, all that data is available to you and to the customer through the cloud physics portal. So also the end customer can log on to the cloud physics portal and he can see a lot, not all, but he can see a lot of information. I will show you in a minute the differences between the customer and the partner portal. So at that moment, once that you installed that observer, five to 10 minutes, you're going to activate that observer. Yeah, so it's a little uh, V app. It's a little virtual appliance that you're going to install. Uh, you're going to put that uh, token in there. Um, and that's it. And from that moment on, um, during 30 days, we're going to assess that data. After seven days, you will get an email. Uh, your end customer will get an email and you will get an email with all the details in there, with all the observations, but also with recommendations in there. And after seven days, you will get all those IT cost calculators as well. Now for the observer, um, 8 gig of RAM, 4 vCPUs, but he's not using those 4 vCPUs. A NIC, 12 gig of disk access, and it's important that that VM, of course, has internet access uh, because he needs to upload uh, that information. Now, um, I will make this picture a little bit bigger for you. By the way, you will see it live as well in the demo, but this is how it looks like. So you will get uh, an email with this information about data collection. And in there, you will see a link to download that OVA file. Yeah. Um, or you can copy that URL. So here you have that URL to that OVF uh, file. And then what you need to do is you go to vCenter, right click, deploy a V app or an OVF file. You put that URL in there, you hit OK. And that's it. He will download it. It's 150 megabyte big. So it's not big at all uh, as an appliance. Now, 12 gig of disk is just to collect all that data locally and then uh, upload it. Um, but the VM itself is 150 meg. So it's really lightweight. You power it on. And then maybe if you take a good look, I will make it bigger in the screenshot when you get the presentation. But here is that token. So that orange number that you see there, that's that organization token. And it's that token that you need to type in in that virtual machine. And that's it. Okay, it's that easy. At that moment, we start to collect all the data. The data is uploaded to the cloud. After 10, 15 minutes, you see the first information already. After seven days, you get everything with all the recommendations. Now, this is a picture of the customer view. So the customer view has a few card decks. The vCenter summary with the host and the VM, the guest analysis. There are some uh, right sizing simulators in there. He can see the numbers of the actual information that he needs. And there are some knowledge base advisors as well, which is really cool because now he's going to tell you, you will see that in my environment, hey, you are running VMware 7.0 update 3, which is not supported on your ProLiant Gen 8 server or Gen 9 server, something like that. Yeah. All those best practices that are in there, yeah? Or you are running VMware 6.0 or 6.5, which is out of support. It's not supported anymore. These kind of things, those advisories are available for your customer. Now, this is for your customer, of course. For you being an HPE partner, we, we want to support you. HPE supports you to become even better, that you become a trusted advisor for that end customer, yeah? So you will get, the, of course, you will get those same card decks, but you will get more card decks, yeah? With more recommendations in there, yeah? You see that yellow and that red when you click on there? Well, apparently there are no 10 known issues on the host analysis, yeah? Now, 
We also have performance troubleshooting Cartex. So you will get access to a lot of reports about networks, VM limits and reservations, which are, by the way, badly configured virtual machines, host resource commitments, data store contentions, uh, power consumption, never underestimate the power consumption of your data center. It's always good that you can replace 10 servers with two or three servers. Yeah, only on the power bill already. And you know today what's happening in the Belgian market with the electricity prices that are going up times two, times three even. Well, this is a great story that you can tell now. Um, you get storage space management, you get insights, complete deep insights about the real utilization, Mr. Customer, this is your real data. And this is, for instance, unused VM space savers. Why does that VM has a 500 gig disk if it only needs 60 and it was growing for 5% in the last year? Yeah, really good insights. It's not done. Health checks. You get more card decks uh, about the health of that current environment. Network health, badly configured things, virtual hardware acceleration, statistics, V motions that are happening. There's benchmarking on uptime. Uh, how good, how high available is that environment? And so on. And so it's with this information that you can go, of course, to your end customer to say, yeah, Mr. Customer, you had those insights of your infrastructure, but we we saw much more things. We did a, an in-depth analysis. By the way, you don't have to say that it's it's just a few card decks that you were um, uh, need to uh, check at, but you can say, hey, we did an in-depth analysis of your environment, and we saw this and that and that and that. By the way, um, if you sign that new infrastructure with us, well, we will take care of all these issues as well, that your environment will become more healthy and more performant. So that's the idea. Cloud physics is a fantastic tool to enhance the discussions from you with your customer. In your sales or pre-sales role, you will become a really a trusted advisor. And this is a free tool that you get access to delivered by HPE by being an HP partner, because that's the only requirement. You got to be an HPE partner. Yeah, so it's not that everybody uh, can go to the link that I'm going to share with you in a few minutes. No, um, you will uh, need to be an HPE partner, but I don't expect if I take a look at the names here, uh, I see a lot of familiar names, uh, so I don't expect a problem there. So, um, Talking about those assessment details, like I said, um, you see those Cartex, by the way, free. Well, everybody has access to free, but that premium uh, in the past Cloud Physics, you had to pay for that. Uh, this was a premium license at Cloud Physics. Well, now that premium license will be given to you being an HP partner. And so you can click on all those Cartex in a few minutes. I'm going to give a demo and I'm going to show it live to you. And then you see, for instance, this eh, host analysis. You see a lot of servers. Now, this is from a demo customer that is by default in there. You see a lot of servers in there. Yep, we even recognize Power Edge and Lenovo and other brand of servers. No problem. We recognize them. And then you will see, hmm. This Lenovo system is unsupported by VMware 5.5. Oh, uh, watch out. Uh, this uh, super micro server is not even in the hardware compatibility list from the VMware that is running on there. And by the way, on ESXi, we noticed that uh, the VMware license is end of support. So you don't have support anymore on there. Ouch. Someone didn't do his job, apparently. Yeah, so this is all information that you get outside this uh, from uh, this tool. There are plenty of additional cards like VM right sizing. So it's going to tell you now, hey, watch out. This VM um, is appropriately sized or is oversized. We see that that VM has four CPUs, but it only has uh, one CPU or two CPUs, for instance, or the same for the memory and for the capacity. 
when we get to take a look at the shared storage analysis, well, there you're going to see on data store level or by vendor, because yeah, we'll, we'll recognize as well Dell storage arrays and so on. And then on those data source, you can get all the information about IOPS and latency and the throughput that are required. It's these numbers that are required to do that storage sizing, right? And there's another one about aggregate uh, performance uh, on uh, the overall CPU and, and memory usage. And then IOPS, you can see the minimum, the maximum, the 95 percentile uh, data. <clears throat> so all the information, really good in-depth information with a 20 second granularity. And you can see it for an entire month. So you can see it going up or down. You will see the weekends. You will see the Mondays and the Fridays after those as well. You will create a dependency map if you have multiple vCenters. For some kind of reason, you have a really big customer with multiple hosts, multiple sites, maybe even multiple vCenters. Well, then you will see that dependency map. <clears throat> You can see uh, all those VMs running or managed by that vCenter and how they interact with each other um, to do, for instance, consolidations or to have a global view uh, on the environment could be interesting as well. And now, of course, why we are here, why we are a fan, why uh, it's replacing Lanamark is there is that one card deck added already available today from 1st October on. That was a challenge on the 1st of October. That date was set uh, because that uh, card deck needed to be in there for the HPE HCI sizing analysis. When you click on there, you will get this picture. That's a little bit like Lanamark, maybe even a little bit more sexy with more details on there, yeah, with CPU and memory, because you have that drop down box here, you can see all those numbers over time uh, from one month. But now, what is the trick? Well, at the top right, you see that little icon there with that light blue thingy on there. Well, when you click on there, you get this pop up. And it's these numbers that you need to go to do a SimpliVity sizing. So we have the SimpliVity online sizer, yeah, which is another tool that I will show you really quickly at the end of this presentation. But when you go to that SimpliVity online sizing tool, um, you get, you need six numbers. And that was the challenge. Where can I find these six numbers? Well, you can find them in cloud physics. Today, I'm talking about today, you need to copy paste these numbers in the SimpliVity online sizer tool. What is also on the roadmap is that um, one day soon there will be a button here and then you will be redirected directly to the SimpliVity online sizer. He will get those numbers and then from within cloud physics, it's one button and then he will give you for this, you need six nodes a uh, large with uh, 768 gig of RAM or these kind of things. So today it's a two-step process. You need cloud physics and then the online sizer, but in the future, it will be one click. And then he will tell you directly for this workload, you need six notes and so on. And at that moment, it's just one phone call to my uh, to my colleagues, Wim and Steven and Christoph. Uh, and you just call us and you Okay, I see that I just got disconnected my microphone. Don't know what's happening here. Software issues keep on remaining. Uh, I assume that you can hear me back again. I'm sorry for that. So I was saying that um, the experience will be much better. Uh, that's the whole idea that you don't have to call us anymore to say, here, here is the landmark report. And now can you make me an assessment? Uh, and can you make me a bill of material? It will be much easier. The only thing that we will do for you is uh, check if everything is done correctly. Okay. It makes our life easier, but it makes your life easier as well. And at the end, we can close that deal in a much faster way. Okay. So it's a win-win situation for you and for us. Of course. Again, it's that trusted advisor. We can guarantee more things, of course. Now, uh, wrap up for um, cloud physics. Like I said today, VMware customers only. Yes. Yeah, so the other observers, because that's the only thing, we just need another observer. 
for a Hyper-V environment and for a physical environment. They're working on it. Mixed workloads, multi-site, no problem. We're going to give you an, an overview, even from licensing uh, from VMware, if you don't have enough or you have too much licenses on VMware uh, or they are expired, for instance. So you will get all this information um, from Cloud Physics. Of course. So if you recognize these kind of things, well, then Cloud Physics is the right answer. Now, how to get started, I'll show you the link in a minute and you will get this link, by the way, through the presentation, we will send it to you. What do you need to do? <clears throat> the link that you need to remember today is app, app.cloudphysics.com. So it's, an, it's a cloud-based application, app.cloudphysics.com. And then you can log in and you can get access to the portal. Now for you being an HPE partner to see those premium card decks, you need to register because otherwise, if you log in and you're not given that premium license, you only get access to those free card decks. I got already a few partners that called me that said, hey, I logged on to Cloud Physics, but I can only see those free card decks. That's because they didn't register. They didn't do the partner registration. So you have to go to that link, just a one-time action, partner, HPE, register, fill in all your information, then HPE will check your email address that your company is an HPE partner. You will get an email and then you will get access to those premium cards. Because by the way, everybody has access uh, on Cloud Physics, but the thing is not everybody gets access to those premium card decks. For that, you need to register one time. Okay, the link is there. Then to install the Cloud Physics Virtual Appliance, I put the link in there as well, because if you go to that to this link, installing Cloud Physics, well, on that page, you will get a little, there's a little video, there's a little bit more explanations. Um, I don't expect any issues because it's oh so easy to deploy it, but never say never if your end customer wants to do it. Well, there's a little video of five minutes that show you step-by-step step how to install that observer, that virtual appliance in VMware, okay? By the way, this is the video. Um, so I put a link in there as well, but to give you an idea is that um, this is the portal that you're gonna see. At the top, you can see that that observer is online, yes or no. And so this is how it actually looks like, okay? So you go, um, this is, yeah, now you can see it better. You see here that URL for that OVF, or you can download the virtual machine directly, uh, the OVA file. So it's, it's up to you. Um, there's the guide. So this is the page that I just uh, pasted and that I'm gonna give to you in uh, the presentation. So this is how it looks like that page with all the installation steps yeah, that you need to follow. Uh, so there's the link for your vCenter. You copy that link, you go into vCenter and you deploy that OVF file. So there it goes. Um, he's showing you quickly, uh, right click, uh, deploy OVF template. You're gonna paste that URL in there. You hit next and then he will start downloading. Yeah, you got to give it a name, of course, as well. I call it Cloud Physics Observer, whatever, something. That's up to you. You hit next. He will start downloading uh, that 150 megabyte of uh, virtual appliance. He will power it on. And then um, I will go a little bit further then. Yeah, you have to select the data store where you're going to put that virtual machine. Uh, normally, it's set to, um, you can set it to DHCP or you can uh, set it to uh, fixed IP. At that moment, of course, you have to give it an IP address uh, and then a default gateway and a DNS server because it needs to have access to the internet, of course, or you can leave it to DHCP if you would like that as well. Then he's downloading and deploying that OVF, then you're gonna power on uh, that uh, virtual machine. As you can see, it's a video of uh, not even four minutes. It goes uh, that fast, you power it on, and then you will see this. So you open up the console, um, you hit okay, 
of course, you're going to read that uh, at user license agreement. Yeah, right. You hit OK, and then he's going to ask you the IP address of your vCenter because he needs to connect to your vCenter to collect all the information. So you type in the IP address. Then he's going to ask you, is this the right one? Yes, OK. And then it will ask you for the username and the password of that vCenter. Then you hit OK again, it's going to validate it. Yep, the credentials have been verified. And then you can add if you want, but this is not uh, mandatory. But you can type in here then a uh, username and password to collect information from the VMs itself as well. Watch out, this is completely optional. So it's not mandatory. OK, but then you get more in-depth information of your VMs. Uh, network access has been verified and this is the last one so here is that organization token because of course this v app needs to know uh, to who this observer belongs which company it is so what you need to do so here is that token you hit that reveal token button that token you're gonna uh, copy and then paste it you're gonna type it in here in that um, observer okay and that's it. You hit OK. He validated the token. You hit the Start Collection button. And from that moment on, uh, now leave this virtual machine running. You don't have to do anything anymore. And so now all the um, data will be uploaded to uh, the Cloud Physics portal. And that's it. OK? So there you go. The video is on the URL that I'm sharing with you in the presentation, but it's really straightforward. Um, I don't expect too many issues. Now I'm going to give a demo just really quickly. I put the screenshots in here for your reference as well. So um, once that we have cloud physics, we have the assessment, uh, of course, for the SimpliVity sizer. Uh, what are we going to do? Um, there's also the link here to that sizer. You can go through the partner portal, by the way. I'm going to put also a direct, uh, easier link in the presentation here as well. Um, so you have that online SimpliVity sizer. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to create here a new assessment or a new sizing. Yeah. At that moment, you got to give it a name. Okay. Customer A, B, C. And then what you need to do is, well, there you go. You're going to create a so-called cluster and you need here six numbers to fill in. Well, it's those six numbers that you got from cloud physics. Well, it's these six numbers that you fill in here. And at that moment, you can say, I want an N plus one or an N plus N. If you have a, a HA uh, two data center stretched cluster, then you can select this one here. Uh, you can select the cluster growth on CPU, on memory, and on storage. You fill in all this information, and then you hit the button, and then you will get that recommendation in here. Yeah. So we will tell you this workload, you can run it with 4DL or SimpliVity 325s, for instance. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, it will only show the recommended model. It's also possible uh, to go into the advanced mode and then you will get a list of 50 SimpliVity nodes and then you can choose yourself which configuration that you prefer. Now watch out, this, on, this online sizer, I always take it with a grain of salt. Uh, uh, please always check with our experts uh, or with me uh, so that uh, this is correct. But at least it gives you a good idea already of how many nodes and which models that you need. And then uh, check with us, we're gonna tweak it because um, um, for those who attended the SimpliVity webinar a few weeks ago, uh, I told you that are uh, uh, some very interesting promotions. Uh, there is that uh, promo pack where we have a few SimpliVity models which are very aggressively priced where you can get up to 70% of discount. So of course, what we're going to do is with these numbers, of course, we can make for you the sizing as well based on that promo pack so that you're sure that you get from day one that you get those best prices, of course. 
So this is then the picture of that advanced mode. The sky is the limit. Then you will see all the DL380Gs, the 325s, the Apollos with uh, silver, with gold, with platinum CPUs. So this goes quite far. Personally, it's the experience. Uh, I don't use this online sizer, but I can imagine for a few of you that this could be a good start already. And then at the end, you will get an export of that configuration. And it's with that configuration that we're going to create you that bill of material. And you get that list uh, to um, uh, go for an OPG for special pricing then. And then you just can order it. Yeah. Also about the hardware upgrades. I explained this more in detail about um, uh, legacy customers and also the the. the traditional uh, SimpliVity 380 with that accelerator card, which is now end of life. So everything is now replaced uh, with those G models. <clears throat> and so depending of which model that you want, the extra small, small, medium, large, and so on, and there's even an extra large, well, we will take a look together with you of how many capacity that you need, which nodes that you need, and how many nodes that you need. There is nothing different in there. This is just a quick reminder um, where we're going to help you. Okay? So this is the quite extended introduction about cloud physics and SAF. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch my screen to my web browser. And so um, I'm gonna show you quickly uh, uh, saf.hpe.com. It's also a, a tool for HP partners. So you need to log in <clears throat> with your passport account. And then here, as you can see, if you compare with cloud physics, it's rather basic. Uh, static environment, but it, there's a lot of information in here. So you can easily here create a new assessment. So you're going to fill in uh, your name, the company name, your email address, um, and then you hit add because then that invitation email will be sent to download to that collector uh, for um, the HP assessment foundry. And then you can see here all the assessments that um, I created. Um, most of the time it's demo. And then when you're gonna take a look here, you will see that analysis. So when you click on there, so in this case, I did one on VMware, by the way, I'm gonna take another one because I had another one here also with a nimble array in there. So here I created an assessment for my VMware environment and also for my nimble array. And then you can see here all the information for storage. Well, what you see is numbers. It's these numbers that you will fill in, in, for instance, Ninja Stars, okay? And then you can drill down in here and you can click because there is uh, more details, of course. Uh, so they're adding also all these dashboards so that you can see the block size and the read and the write and the IOPS. So here there are some, there are really nice pictures in there. I like SAF. Um, it's not as sexy as cloud physics, but the tool as such is really good. And so the cool thing is that now it's a nimble array, but we give the same information if you have a Dell compellent array or uh, uh, whatever uh, pure array or an, uh, an IBM array. So all those arrays are recognized and you get these numbers. Now for, for VMware, um, uh, what you can do is, uh, he will connect to your vCenter or it's even possible to upload RV tools. Everybody heard at least or used RV tools. It's, it's, a, it's an Excel sheet, let's say, with too much information in there that you need to analyze. Well, uh, we can uh, analyze those RV tools in here as well. And so he will tell you, in my environment, I have two clusters with seven hosts, 44 virtual machines, 93 vCPUs, 56 physical cores, a 1.7 uh, physical to virtual ratio is very good because I can go up to four, uh, four to one uh, uh, today. Uh, best practices from Intel, AMD, and VMware. So I am quite good. I can add a lot of more vCPUs on there. And then also on the memory and the capacity. Back again, uh, you can see here by ESX hosts. Uh, when you click on there, you can see also more information of how good and how bad. You can see it's a Synergy running 701. So there's a lot of information in 
SAF. And this is the tool that we're going to use today. Until further notice, keep on following us, of course, uh, um, uh, for Hyper-V and bare metal environments. Now, of course, for VMware environments, I advise you to go to Cloud Physics. So the link is app.cloudphysics.com. And then you're going to log in. OK, now everybody can log in. But the difference will be uh, you will see all those card decks. So now there is my own company uh, that I was analyzing. And there is a, a demo customer as well. Um, so now you can choose yourself uh, which one you want to see. Now, there's one advice that I'm going to give you is uh, you see that little, uh, yeah, I call it a teardrop, a lever, a handle. Yeah. Uh, if you open it up, you can see more information because I got already um, questions. Hey, Bart, I created an assessment. Add customer, put in the email address from that customer, you being the contact. And then um, here's the email, the message that your customer will get. You can even optimize it a little bit. But then um, they just sent, uh, they put the sent invite in here and then they got that email, they install the observer, but then um, they don't have that assessment, that license assigned. Now to assign that assessment, you can do it here. So when you're registered as an HPE partner, you get the right to assign that license. So it's now called that HPE infrastructure campaign that was awarded to me. So I hit OK. And at that moment, I am good to go and I can see those premium card decks. Or you can do it in another way if you forgot this one. And so I had a few customers already calling me, hey, Bart, I don't see those premium decks. Well, at that moment, what you need to do, you need to open up that handle, that lever, yeah? And then you will see here that there is not an assessment assigned in there. So now you can see that on my assessment from my company, I created, I assigned that license on the 29th of November, and it will run now until the 29th of December. And then I will get an email with that final report, eh? because it's not the idea here. And now I was doing this at uh, the, the cloud physics people. They gave me the right. They know what I do. Eh? So uh, they gave me the right to assign that assessment multiple times. But uh, it's not the idea that we're going to run uh, cloud physics assessments for the upcoming five years and then get all those recommendations. For that, we have info site, of course, if you have an HPE environment. Right. But this is what you need to do then. So if you call me and you're going to tell me, hey, Bart, I cannot see uh, those premium card decks. Well, then I'm going to tell you, well, go to the customer's dashboard, open up that customer ABC, and then you will see that there is no assessment assigned. What you need to do, you need to add that assessment. And then for one month, you will get all those premium card decks. Hold on, you will get those premium card decks for your entire life for the upcoming five years, but it's only during one month that we're going to collect all that data. Now, if you tell me, hey, Bart, I don't have that assessment, that right, that license, I don't have it. Well, at that moment, that's the link that I had in my presentation is that means that you didn't register as a partner yet. So what you need to do, I am a new HPE Cloud Physics user. You put in your name, your email address, your company, and then you have to tell me here, uh, are you a distributor or a system integrator or are you an MSP or a value added reseller? So you have to select the partner type with the country. And then eventually, if you want to speed up things, yeah, because sometimes it takes a few days. If you want to speed up things, I advise you, Put your HPE representative email address in there. So which is, by the way, your PBM. Uh, so put your uh, PBM um, in here. And so at that moment, he or she will also get an email. And then she can push that button to say, yep, that partner ABC has the right to run cloud physics because I can confirm that he is a partner. And at that moment, you will get that right, that assessment here. And from that moment on, if you hit here on that um, assessment, 
There you go. Your data has been analyzed because this one is running for more than a week. Remember, uh, there's seven days for the complete analysis. I started on the 29th of November, which is more than seven days ago. So now I can have all this information in here. Just go to the assessment. Now, really quickly, something you see here at the top, that green icon, that means that your observer is online, which is a good thing. If this is orange, yellow, orange, that means that the observer is offline and that cloud physics is not getting any information. Okay, so now I go to my assessment and I am logged on as a partner, not as a customer, because when I log on as a customer, I only have seven, six or seven card decks in here. Now I am logged on as a partner. So that means that I get all these card decks. So I have a lot of card decks on infrastructure, on performance troubleshooting, on storage space management, and also on health checks, right? Now, I'm not going to show all of them, just the most important one. So we're going to take a look at the host analysis. So now you will see uh, my servers in here. By the way, at the left, you can always filter. So if you have a customer with a lot of servers, uh, you can filter down. You can put tags, labels on there. Uh, for instance, on virtual machine level, this could be handy. I have 100 virtual machines, but not all of them needs to be migrated. So you can select all the virtual machines. You can put a tag on there, and then you can say, show me all the resources only for those virtual machines with that tag to do a sizing, for instance. So now what I advise is here, you can see my server ESX1. I always tell you, hey, put that lever, that handle, <clears throat> click on there. And now you can see that, for instance, my ESX1 server on Synergy for AD Gen 9. Yes, I still have a Gen 9 server. Um, that hardware is unsupported by 7.0 update 1D that I am running, okay? Supported by VMware, but not with the currently installed version of ESXi. Oops, yeah, I know I need to update my firmware and I need to update my ESXi version to 7.0 update 2 and then I am okay. But hey, these are really cool recommendations that you can see in here, I have another server, ProLiant Microserver Gen 10 Plus, which is not on the HCL as well from the version that I am running. Also there I need to update. But so a lot of information in here, then you can click on that server, you will get all the information, of course, the current issues, but then you can see here, it's memory swap, network transmission, data store latencies. So you can send them, I'm, I'm quite okay. I have a nimble array, so I'm really under the uh, sub one milliseconds. Um, but here you can see now all the information up to one month, yeah? And then you can drill down, in here and you can click to say, hey, I want more information about a specific day, for instance. Um, really cool stuff. I have more cards also on virtual machine level. You can see here <clears throat> a lot of virtual machines. Hmm, I have a lot of virtual machines running CentOS 7 where the support was ended uh, two years ago. I have some other machines in orange in here. Uh, always you can open it up and then uh, orange means noteworthy. Uh, well, it's not a technical issue, but apparently uh, the provisioned guest OS type is not ideal. Uh, so he is giving you recommendations again to say, hey, on this virtual machine, you should change this also here. Uh, the VM type, uh, the hardware type is uh, not ideal. Okay, so plenty of recommendations. When you click on an operating system, again, you will see all the performance. Whoops, I see here that my tools virtual machine at one moment in time he needed a little bit more cpu than he effectively has so maybe i should add a virtual cpu in there at least on the 16th of december now of course i can uh, open it up completely uh, and then you can see wow, this is quite okay um much more cards that are available uh, i'm not going to go in there uh, host licensing 
Now, in my case, I have uh, good licenses, including support. So that is good. And so now the thing that you need to do finally is uh, you take a look at those red things in here. Also, the VM right sizing. Nah, I have a lot of VMs that are or under provisioned or over provisioned. So this is more these cards you're going to use to become that trusted advisor. Okay. Now, of course, you get the dashboard. You can, by the way, tweak that dashboard. You can move it around as well. So you can select yourself. You get always very interesting a top 10 of VMs with uh, too much CPU or the top hosts, which hosts are, uh, if you want to do a high availability and load balancing, you can see here that my hosts, that they are good uh, balanced, yes or no, or that I need uh, more resources. So a lot of things in your dashboard and otherwise with all your cards, uh, you're going to take a look. The same for performance troubleshooting. Now on the performance side, I don't see too much issues in here. Um, also, I don't see any VMs in here with which are limited or which have reservations. Uh, also on the storage space, ah, guest space analysis, I have a lot of uh, noteworthy recommendations of VMs that have or too much space or not enough space. There are also things about reclaimable VM or VDisk. So these are all VMs who have claimed too much capacity. So if I'm going to tweak my storage, apparently I can save 23 terabyte of capacity. Hmm. I think this is some work that I need to do during the Christmas holidays. So take a look and optimize my environment and then finally also on the health checks apparently there's one machine that needs attention on the guest tools yeah so apparently that clear os vm um, has a problem where the vmware tools are not running but this is normal because that virtual machine is currently not running anyway but so there you go you get a lot of recommendations also for vmware ha for vmware drs if you have that drs license it's going to give you recommendations and also on virtual hardware recommendations and networking so there's so much information to become a trusted advisor now I'm almost true. There's one thing that I'm going to show you is, of course, uh, that one card that I want to share with you is um, not in the health checks, but the one from, uh, where is it? Not the health checks one, but the, um, not this one, but the other ones that I need the card store, of course. Uh, yes, and the one that I was looking for is the HCI sizing view cards for a deck. Now, this is the performance deck. Hold on, this is the one that I need. I need to go to the infrastructure planning HPE HCI sizing. So, for those who are interested in uh, hyperconverged, SimpliVity, DHCI, complete solutions or even an MSA with some ProLiant servers. But anyway, to make your life better, you see here uh, the overview of CPU and memory and data store IOPS and so on. But so the trick here is at the top right, that little icon with that light blue disk on there. Well, when you click on there, it's these numbers, 38 VMs, 127 vCPUs, 5.29 vCPU per CPU that is provisioned today, memory, capacity, and IOPS. With these numbers, you can go to the SimpliVity online sizer. You put these six numbers in there, and then he will tell you instantly how many nodes that you need from a specific model. And then you can go into advanced mode. You can start playing around with CPUs and so on, or you just call us, and then we're going to help you with this. But so this is the process, okay? This is cloud physics. The only thing that you need to do is register, yeah? Then you need to log on to the portal and you're going to create a, on the dashboard, you're going to create a, yeah, you have to go then to your uh, customer inventory. You're going to create a new customer, 
yeah now these are my customers i need to go to the other one to the partner portal and now i can create a new customer you send them this email you deploy the observer and then uh, you're good to go make the analysis and then give us those numbers and we're gonna create that configuration together with you okay now if there are any more questions of course um you know where to find us because of course uh, I am not alone. Eh? We have a really an extended and we are really proud of our HPE team. Where are we going to help you? I am more the architect and the trainer that's going to make you better. Uh, we have Wim, Steve, Christophe, who will create all those bills of materials for you. And for all the non-technical questions about your partnerships and so on, uh, we have Danny and Peter uh, who can help you as well. There's our email address. There's our phone number as well. So uh, feel free um, to contact us. Uh, for any questions or to get started as well uh, with uh, cloud physics. Uh, the last weeks I was helping a lot of partners um, to get started. Okay, so um, I'm going to take a look at the timing. Look at that. I'm going to be able to give back even a few minutes of your time. Thank you very much for your time for spending uh, with us. Uh, I will stay here as long as our people connected. Um, I will stay here to answer all your questions. Uh, one of the days, uh, this deck, um, I'm going to send it to our marketing team and they will send you an email with a copy of this presentation so that you can share this information as well, maybe with your colleagues, because I am uh, convinced that this is a really great tool uh, to make the sales of an HP solution even easier uh, to your customers. Why? Because you really can act as a trusted advisor. That salesperson is not a salesperson anymore. It's not just here to sell, give me the money to sell a ProLiant with a nimble array or a SimpliVity solution. No, we're going to make your environment even better. We're going to optimize it. Yeah. Um, because we have seen a lot of things that are happening in the last years on your environment. Okay. And this is why HPE bought Cloud Physics and now why they are giving this tool to you to the HPE partners, okay? I am a fan, I am using it a lot, yeah? Um, so get started with it and then uh, we'll stay in touch. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm gonna give you the time to answer the questions in the Q&A window and otherwise, thank you, stay safe. By the way, go to techdataevents.be because we have a lot of uh, upcoming webinars. Uh, next week is about Aruba Instant On and in January, there is a SimpliVity, a compute uh, support, an info site uh, webinar. There are a lot of uh, uh, exciting things uh, in the upcoming year 2022. Yeah, so uh, we'll stay in touch. Uh, thank you very much and hope to see you soon in real life, in person, one day soon from now uh, next year. Thank you. Bye-bye. And if you have questions, feel free to ask them in the Q&A window. Stay safe.